Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 2321B, and today's date is November 5th, 2020, and the title of the episode is The Sting Operation Has Begun, Trump New, Be Ready, EAS On Deck. Let's get into the economic collapse, political and geopolitical news. Now, we need to keep perspective on this entire thing because we need to understand that this is not about four years. It's not about eight years. It's about the future of this country. And the only way to drain the swamp, to expose everything they do, well, you need to set up certain traps. You need to set up sting operations. You need them to do what they do best so you can expose it to the world so people can actually see this and question it. Remember, the Great Awakening has not ended. Actually, it's just begun. And to move forward, what are we going to have to do here? We're going to have to wake more and more people up. To take back this country, it's not just about an election. It's about removing the power from the deep state, from the invisible enemy. How do we remove the power from them? What do we do? You need to expose everything they do. And everything the patriots are doing right now, it's part of the plan. It might not make sense in the beginning. It might seem confusing in the beginning. But isn't that how plans normally work? Especially those that are done in the shadows so nobody knows exactly what you're going to do next. Because in war, in the art of war, in any type of battle, you don't come out and you tell everyone, hey, by the way, this is my plan. This is what I want to do. I want to take down the deep state by doing this, that, and the other thing. No, you make it seem like the deep state, the mainstream media, they're in complete and utter control. We've seen this before. How many times before? And how did it end up? It ended up where Trump won. He won every single battle and he exposed each of these individuals every single time. He exposed Schiff. He exposed Pelosi. He exposed the mainstream media. He exposed the corrupt politicians. And he's continually doing this. Think about what happened when the riots started, where they pretended that these were peaceful protests and the riots didn't exist. What happened? Yes, in the beginning, it seemed like, wow, are we crazy? Are we just seeing something else that nobody else is seeing? And then it turned out later on that, yes, there were riots. Yes, there were riots all over the place. They were hiding it from the American public and they had to admit it. And now we're in the 2020 election cycle here. What are we seeing? We're seeing fraud like we've never seen before. What is the mainstream media doing right now? What is the social media platforms doing right now? They're pretending it doesn't exist. Does it sound very similar to what happened with the riots? They're pretending that fraud doesn't exist. And what is social media doing? They are censoring as many people as they possibly can who mention fraud. Well, what did they do during the riots? Did they censor those people that were showing the rioting or trying to let everyone know? Yes, they were. They're putting warning labels on everyone. And here they are during the elections. They're doing the same exact thing. They're pretending they don't exist. This is exactly what Trump and the Patriots want. They want them to continue on this path. Why? Because it wakes people up. Well, the mainstream media, the corrupt politicians, the social media companies with all their warning labels, they're telling me that election fraud does not exist. And then when it comes out that it is true, that fraud does exist, and the D's, the deep state, the mainstream media has been using this fraud to push Biden through the elections, people are going to wake up. Remember, Trump knew exactly what they were planning. This wasn't like a secret. He actually, he's been telling everyone for months now. They've been planning this for months now. Let me ask you a question. When you 
are in a sting operation. Do you go in and arrest everyone before the crime is committed? Or do you wait until they commit the crime and then you move in? So why didn't Trump move forward with his plan if he knew the playbook? Why didn't they just go after them? Because this is not just about catching them. First of all, no one would believe it because they didn't do anything yet. Second of all, you have to wait until they actually do it. This way, you track them, you watch them, and you let it spread across social media. Now, remember, the deep state, they're desperate at this point because they've been planning this for a very long time. I know a lot of people think they just went ahead and they did this. No, this was planned from the very beginning. And this is why I mentioned RBG yesterday. And I don't mean the Patriots killed her. Remember, Q gave us clues along the way and said, who's keeping RBG alive? Why are they keeping her alive? What drugs are they using? We'll be talking about this in a little bit. This was on purpose. What were they trying to do with RBG? Think about that for a second. This was their plan from the very beginning. And you're going to see how it all comes together. And you're going to say, wow, I see what they were trying to do here. And is it going to work? Absolutely not. Actually, Joe Biden, he told us what they were going to do. He was giving a little speech on video and he said the following. Take a listen. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. So right there, Biden told everyone that they are have the most extensive, inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics, letting everyone know that they're going to be committing fraud during this election cycle. Now, the question is, why did Trump and the Patriots, why did they release the laptop right before the elections? Why did they release the laptop from hell? And a lot of this information came out about money laundering on how China, Ukraine, and other countries, how they could influence the vice president. Think about that for a second. They purposely said with all the information, forget about the other pictures with uh, child pornography and things like that. Think about the money laundering, how foreign governments can influence the vice president. Do you think it's just the individuals, the deep state players here in the United States that are trying to manipulate the elections? Or do you think it's foreign governments manipulating the elections? Do you think China is involved in manipulating the elections? How could they manipulate it? Well, remember, China, they can produce the ballots. They can produce fake ballots. Now, was this laptop introduced to show the connection? I'm starting to think that right now. Now, what's very interesting is that the lawyer who was pushing vote by mail in 2020, he is also behind the Russian dossier in 2016. This is Mark Elias. He's the Democratic lawyer behind many of the voting changes, which is causing havoc right now in the 2020 presidential election. He is also responsible for hiring Fusion GPS to compile the Russia dossier to dig up dirt on Trump in the 2016 race. What law firm do you think he worked for? Perkins Coy Law Firm in Washington? And he once represented Hillary Clinton, her presidential campaign? So this individual was behind all of this. Think about how all this is connected. Now, what's very interesting, and we're going to be talking a lot more about this a little bit later, but I just wanted to mention it right now, is that half of Trump's Twitter and Facebook posts since the election are flagged as misinformation. And if you look at all his tweets, you can see how they put the labels on every single one of them. Now, keep that in mind because the deep state, they're preparing to do something. Now, yes, Q has warned us of all of this. We know about the censorship. I mean, look what they did 
to YouTube channels, look what they did to Twitter accounts, look what they did to Facebook and Facebook groups. They took them all down. That was just the beginning. Remember, they're going all out right now. And I'm talking about the deep state, the corrupt politicians, the invisible enemy. They're not bringing accounts back up. They're not restoring Facebook groups right now. Actually, they're going to be bringing down a lot more of them. Maybe even Trump's. We were warned about this. And we'll be talking about that a little bit later. Now, with all these polls that are coming in, they're trying to convince us that everyone is for Biden. This is what the mainstream media is trying to do. And of course, they're the bullhorn for the Biden administration, the deep state, the invisible enemy. And they're trying to convince the American public that yes, all these votes are for Biden, but it doesn't make sense. And I'm not talking about the 200,000 that were uh, dropped, the 138,000 that were dropped, and the rest and all of it goes to Biden. When you start to look at the votes for the individuals in the Senate, in the House, it really doesn't make sense because those Republicans who put these people back into their position or flip the seats in the House, they decided, yes, we want these people, but we don't want the president. Does that make sense? No, it doesn't. Republicans right now have flipped seven U.S. House races so far, and Democrats flipped two. That narrows the Democrats' hold on the House from 232 to 227, nine more than the majority. Even if no more flipped, Republicans could even ultimately flip 15, as many as Democrats had hoped to. And Republicans had twice as many Senate seats to defend this election than the Democrats and they currently appear to retain their Senate majority. So far, Dems only flipped one seat, so the Republicans still have control, and they're flipping the Dem seats in the House. And I do believe there's gonna be a lot more that are going to be flipped. So these same people that did this in the Senate and the House, they decided they were going to vote for Biden. Does it make any sense? No. And we know that all these ballots that are being dropped, it's mathematically impossible where they're all dropped and not one, not one is for Trump, which means they're cheating. And Project Veritas, well, they went undercover once again. And what did they find? Well, they found that the United States Postal Service, there was a whistleblower in there and they were instructed to backdate late mail. Take a listen to what this guy said His voice is masked, so he doesn't want to give away his identity, but just take a listen. You you work. I work in the Traverse City Post Office, more specifically the Barlow Branch. Your boss told you and your colleagues something that shocked you this morning. What was it? We were issued a directive this morning to collect any ballots we find in mailboxes, collection boxes, just outgoing mail in general, separate them at the end of the day so that they could uh, hand stamp them with the previous day's date. Today is November 4th, for clarification. Who is your boss, and what is his title? Jonathan would be a direct supervisor, yes. Uh, As of right now, he is the opening supervisor for the Barlow Branch Post Office. So I, and this is anecdotal, uh, carried down in another office and they watched the postmaster doing it. Um, If it were just a typical day, it would be clerks doing it up at the distribution center. So 8 p.m. election day, November 3rd, uh, the Court of Appeals uh, ruled ballots have to be received by that time. And and what were you told? To separate them today so they could mark them with yesterday's date and send them through the express system to wherever they needed to go. Is- so right there, that's election fraud. Then we have the Mission County Clerk. They discovered that the total number of votes counted by election software did not match printed tabulator tapes. So something is off there. It doesn't make sense. And then we have Essential Fleckus. This individual went out and said, okay, I'm going to see if these people voted via absentee ballot. Now, these people are dead, okay? So it turns out that this individual, William Bradley, typed in the name, and yes, on the internet, you can see who voted, but you can't see who they voted for. So you only can see if they voted or not. So this individual put the name in. This individual, by the way, is 118 years old died in 1984. And it seems that this ver- this person voted via absentee ballot in Wayne County, Michigan. How is that possible? And Essential Fleckus did this 
to other individuals. And it all came out the same way, which means they've been doing this for a very long time. And actually people's pundit, and I believe this is Rich Barris, he checked this out. I used info via social security death index on the voter information on the Michigan SOS website. And guess what? William was born 1902, died in Detroit in, at the age of 82 in 1984. He applied for the absentee ballot on 9-11, submitted it on 9-19. They've been at this for months. Like I said, the deep state, they've been planning this for months. This just didn't pop up. Ever since the pandemic happened, I do believe before this, they were planning for all of this because one thing led into another. They were hoping they would get the pandemic because they said, okay, this is our plan. We're gonna use mail-in votes because this is the only way we can manipulate it to get Biden into office. Because we know if people went to vote in person, it would not work. Why? DHS is monitoring all that information. They're checking the electronic systems. They're making sure there's no malware. They're checking to see if a foreign actor infiltrated the system. That is not happening. So their plan was to use mail-in the entire time. How do you get people to do mail-in, to make it look like everyone is doing mail-in? Well, you need some type of pandemic. You need an event to push your agenda. Bring on the pandemic. It had nothing to do with anything except the elections. Yes, they were also trying to bring in other agendas like vaccines and things like that, which is just a side uh, note to all of this, and it would push their 16-year plan forward. But their main objective was to get Biden in there because if Biden was in there or any other candidate was in there, they could move forward with their plan. So to do this, they created this pandemic. They brought it to the United States. And this way they can push mail-in voting. But Trump countered all of this by opening up the country. They thought he was going to keep it closed. They thought they would scare everyone enough and they would push Trump to keeping the entire country closed. But it did not work. And now they had to continue with their plan. They couldn't stop because it was already laid out. But there's one problem with their plan. They were hoping the Supreme Court would be on their side. They were hoping that RBG would be there because any ruling that went to the Supreme Court, it would be knocked down and Trump would not win. Now, like I said before, my other report, what was the deep state trying to do? They were trying to keep RBG alive. We'll be getting to that in just a moment. But we can see that they're, the deep state players, they're trying to hide their cheating. Now, out in Detroit, we see that they were trying to put boards on the window so nobody could look in to see how the counts were being done. So they were keeping people back. They weren't transparent whatsoever. And this is how you cheat. Now think about this. At 4 a.m., we had a Wisconsin dump of 65,000 votes, 100% for Biden. At 4 a.m., we had Michigan, 138,499 votes, 100% for Biden. Arizona poll workers forcing voters to use Sharpies, thereby invalidated their ballots because the Sharpies bleed through and the scanners can't pick them up. Now, I remember when I was in school, you had to use a number two pencil. You couldn't use a marker because the scanners are very specific on what they pick up. You know these individuals were trained in that. You know they knew that a ballpoint pen was the only option. Actually, when I went to vote, they were handing out ballpoint pens. That's it. That's all you were allowed to use. And people are reporting that certain people got Sharpies. Other people did not get Sharpies. So Trump, during this entire time, he was leading in Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. They saw that he was going to win. So they had to stop counting. What happened next? Ballots started to appear and they magically helped only one candidate, Biden, because they had to make up the difference. So when you take a step back, everything is only going in one direction. The media bias only goes in one direction. Polling errors only go in one direction. Found votes only go in one direction. Voter fraud and tampering only go in one direction. And that is not in the direction of Trump. 
It's in the direction of Biden. And we know that this was their plan. But remember, this is a gigantic sting operation. Trump, the Patriots, they knew the playbook from the beginning. We've known for a very long time. And Trump has been studying the deep state, been studying their tactics, and so have we for a very long time. What does the deep state like to do to try to push legislation, try to push certain laws? They create events. They create a crisis. And they try to push whatever they need through. What is Trump doing right now? He's using their tactics against them. He's creating an electoral crisis. Look how bad the situation is. It is awful. Look at the fraud that's going on. How can we stop this? Is there something that we can use to stop all of this? Can we pass legislation to stop this chaos right now? Because we never want this to happen again. And this is what it's all about. You need to change the system so the deep state can't cheat in the future. If Trump just won and that was it, he just won and there was no problems, the election process would not be changed. It would stay the same. And when he came to the end of his second term, what would the deep state do? Yes, there's still are those individuals out there. They never disappear. What would they try to do? They would try to steal the election again. He knew this this time. He knew that they knew how he worked it last time. He allowed them to go through with their plan. He needed the crisis. He needed the chaos. He needed the uncertainty. And this will affect not just Republicans, but Democrats and everyone else. Because nobody ever wants this to happen again. Everyone wants a fair election. Everyone wants everything accounted for. I mean, except for the deep state and the corrupt politicians, of course. And this is why he's been doing it. This is what he tweeted out. We have claimed for electoral vote purposes, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which won't allow legal observers, the state of Georgia and the state of North Carolina, each one of which has a big Trump lead. Additionally, he, we hereby claim that state of Michigan, if in fact there was a large number of secretly dumped ballots, has been widely reported. And then he continued, any vote that came in after election day will not be counted. Remember, it's election day, it's not election week. Now, what's very interesting is that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, which gave a three-day extension to count votes, including ballots with no postmarks, has overruled the lower court and will not allow Republicans to observe the vote count in Philly. Why would the Pennsylvania Democrats sue to stop GOP poll observers from monitoring the ballot counting in Philadelphia if they have nothing to hide? Does that make any sense whatsoever? Of course it does. If you're trying to hide the manipulation. Tom Fitton tweeted this out. It is not normal for multiple states or even one state to be counting presidential votes for days after an election. It is without precedent in modern American history, and it raises significant statutory and constitutional concerns. And Richard Grinnell tweeted this out. Joe Gloria, a Clark County election official, says he cannot guarantee there isn't fraud in Nevada voting, and he isn't allowing Trump team access to watch signature verification. We are concerned they are counting illegal ballots and not just legal votes. Yes, we want all votes counted, but the legal votes, the fake votes, the non-legal votes, those do not need to be counted. Only the legal votes. Now, everybody wants the Department of Justice to step in, but because of regulations, they have to wait 10 days after the election to step in. And this is what Emerald Robinson tweeted out. Hearing from a White House source, the Justice Department is claiming that regulations require them to wait 10 days before intervening in the election, which actually is okay. I do believe that Trump and the Patriots, they want this to play out. Don Jr. kind of sums up the whole thing, which means they knew exactly what was going on. 
you didn't see all these games, statistical impossibilities, a magic ballot in 2016 because the Democrats figured they had it in the bag and wouldn't have to break out all the stops. What they did this time, they learned from the 2016 election. They understood what Trump was going to do. Trump allowed them to move forward with their plan. He always knew. He knew exactly what they were planning and they created a sting operation. Everything was set in motion. He told everyone that this was going to happen. But remember, when you tell people, people don't believe. You must show them because seeing is believing. It's almost like if you tell a child, listen, see that flame right there? That's hot, don't touch it. And you say, hey, don't touch that, it's hot. What does the child do? Well, they have to touch the flame, they get burnt. At that point, they understand, yes, fire is hot. You just can't tell them. They have to experience it. Now they know. When you tell people there's an election fraud, that they're trying to steal the election, it just goes over their head. They don't care. You actually have to see it. Just like you saw censorship. Just like you saw the dictators in the different states, governors. You saw the riots and how the police were told to stand down. You had to experience all this. Well, now we're experiencing election fraud. How a deep state, how foreign influences, how they go about stealing an election. This has been going on for a very long time. It's just been hidden behind the scenes. No one was able to see it. Trump right now is bringing it out into the forefront, out of the shadows, out of the dark, into the light, so everyone can see us. This is what he's been doing his entire four-year term. He's been bringing the corruption out into the light. And you just can't dump everything at once. Can you imagine if he came out the first day that he won election in 2016 and said, listen, by the way, Joe Biden is corrupt. Here's the laptop. By the way, here's election fraud. Here's this. Here. No one would pay attention. It's too much. You need to show and people have to experience it while it's happening. That's when you understand. This is what the deep state did with mass shooting. This is what they did with 9-11. They create an emotional response to push their agenda forward. So Trump is doing the same exact thing. He's creating an emotional response. We have a problem here. We have a crisis. We're going to need to solve this, not at this moment, but later on. Because at this moment, we have to show the fraud. We have to show what they're actually trying to do. And if you look, and we said this in the beginning, Almost every single tweet that Trump is putting out there about mail-in votes, about fraud, they have been censoring. And he's been telling us about mail-in voting since, what, May? April? We know we can go back further than that, but he's been tweeting out a lot about this. Now, think about how desperate the deep state is. They are cheating so everyone can see. They believe they're in control. The mainstream media will push this through. Don't worry, we got this. But what's happening is, is they're dumping a massive amount of ballots. It doesn't make sense to people. You don't have ballots come in, 200, 300, 400,000, and they're all for one candidate. Remember, Trump is going to use this when he brings them to court. Yes, he's doing the first round and some he's winning, some he's losing, that is to be expected. But remember, there's going to be evidence that's going to be produced. Now, War Clandestine tweeted this out, which kind of sums everything up. And let me just read the tweet here. It's a thread. So let me read. Number one, every patriot needs to, be, needs to read this. After patience and observation, I deduce how this phase of the plan is being executed and more importantly, why it is being done this way. The sheep are meant to see something and we are maximizing eyes on the situation and I'll prove it. Notice Fox declared Arizona for Biden very early, while CNN and MSNBC have Arizona neutral. Both echo, echo chambers are feeling fear to their base, making them glued to the situation. Fear porn, maximizing eyes on. This is not an accident. The sheep are about to be shown something big. I know it's been painful, but this delay only benefits MAGA. It neutralizes the organized riots on standby where Trump is going to be declared the winner. It introduces an avenue to attack voter fraud and secure further elections while we have the maximum eyes on from both sides of the aisle. 
it exposes the mainstream media outlets for calling states too early in attempt to influence public perception via disinformation, therefore subverting an election coup d'etat. It grants the NSA U.S. military the authority and optics to reveal foreign interference. It will be worth the wait. Massive happenings are going to occur in the coming days, weeks. We, de- we need to make sure that the normies see it, all of it, keep them engaged. That's what this operation is about, waking up normies and discrediting our number one enemy, the mainstream media. What is soon to unfold will do both simultaneously. Trump will squeak this victory out by a tiny margin. The Dems will, 180, foaming at the mouth, call for a recount and accuse Trump of cheating again. Votes will need to be validated. Trump will end up winning by a large margin, and we're going to get the Dems to ask for it. The lib sheet won't be able to ignore it because they're expecting the recount to destroy Trump, but in the end, it will only benefit him, just like Mueller. This is how we infiltrate liberal echo chambers and get them to see what we want them to see. Laser pointer effect. Given the way this is transpiring and how this limbo benefits Trump, I am confident that we are in control. This is part of the plan. Remain vigilant. Do not falter. Stick to the mission. Don't allow the unknown to consume you. Hold the line and let the plan unfold. And I completely agree. And yes, this is holding the riots off. But as soon as the results are in and there's a recount, I do believe the deep state is going to be moving forward with this. Now, remember... We talked yesterday about how DHS created the ballots and most likely put a watermark on the ballots. Now, what's very interesting coming out of California from Alex Padilla, the Office of Voting Systems Technology Assessment, we can confirm now that yes, there is a watermark on the ballots. And this says pursuant to elections code, 13002 and the California Code of Regulations, Title II, Section 2215, 2218, 2280, the Secretary of State's office has selected a design and color combination to use in the November 3rd, 2020 general election. The watermark for the November 3rd, 2020 general election is the CA poppy. The tint for the background and watermark is red, PMS 192. The watermark and tint must appear on the ballot itself, not only on the stub. So there is a watermark, and I do believe that DHS put it on there. It might be another watermark, which has the state and the federal watermark on there. But I do believe that you need some type of infrared light to see it. And maybe this is why Q has been telling us, and another reason for it, rig for red. Also, if we go back to post 765, Q has also told us to watch the water. Does that mean watch the watermark? Now that's very interesting. I do believe that Trump, he's exposing voter fraud. He's also going to introduce voter ID because he created the crisis to do this. Kevin Sorbo tweeted this out. Bring back voter ID. If you need one to drive, buy alcohol, fly a plane, adopt a pet, buy tobacco products, open or access your bank account, then you should need one to vote. How do you stop all of this? You use voter ID. So let's go back to post 2,855. It says, welcome to the Democratic Party. They will stop at nothing to regain power. Time to adopt voter ID law. Now this was back February 21st, 2019. So let's think logically about this. If you know the playbook, why allow the deep state to proceed? How do you wake the public up? Crisis. How do you introduce voter ID? with the crisis. Is this about the election or about the future of the country? Sometimes the people must see it to believe it. Change is not always easy. Change is uncomfortable. Sometimes you must take two steps back to move three steps forward. And that's what we've always experienced from the very, very beginning. And Martin Geddes tweeted this out. If they declare a win, it triggers the audit announcement and their downfall for insurrection. If they don't declare a win, but won't concede, then they expose themselves as a running an insurrection. Either way, the insurrection is exposed and ended. Goodbye, D-Party, last election. So where's all this most likely going to end up? Supreme Court. This brings me back to the beginning when we talked about RBG. The deep state, their plan 
has always been in motion. They couldn't stop it. But their plan included RBG. Remember, she was a Supreme Court justice. She wasn't supposed to die. They were supposed to keep her alive long enough. So when Trump brought this to the Supreme Court, he couldn't win. They couldn't do it. This is why Q was letting us know the information about RBG, that she was barely hanging on this entire time. Post 2653, who are the doctors currently treating RBG? What other political former current senior political heads are they affiliated with? What off-market drugs are being provided to RBG in order to sustain minimum daily function? What is the real medical diagnosis of RBG? Who is managing her care? Who is really managing her care? The clock is ticking. Panic in DC. Basically, they were keeping her barely alive. And it didn't work. She passed. And the deep state couldn't alter their plan. The course was already set. All they could do is try to block Amy Coney Barrett. They never thought Trump would be able to push this through. Why was he able to push this through? It goes back to the beginning. The Senate was the target, not the House, the Senate. Look how much the Senate has done. It has worked in the Patriots' favor. It was planned this way from the beginning. And their plan has now gone down the tubes. And what's very interesting is that Paul Sperry tweeted this out. Funny how CNN has suddenly stopped its COVID, COVID drumbeat, isn't it? They even taken down their death toll tumbler. Aren't we still in the middle of a supposed national health care emergency? CNN, don't you care anymore? CNN, what a bunch of phonies. What did Trump say? I think he said that this was going to disappear just like that. What did Q say? Oh, this was going to disappear plus one day after the election. What's happening right now? They don't care about COVID anymore. They're going to take all those death toll numbers down. They're not going to report on it. You know why? They don't need it. As we move forward day after day, people will just forget about it. It won't be mentioned on the mainstream media. The fear will be gone. You know why? They're moving on to their next mission. And I just wanted to read this from Joe M, who's on Parler. Yes, he's been kicked off of uh, Twitter many, many times, but this is what Joe M put out there. Surprised that some followed the miracle of the plan for three years and marveled at its sophistication, but for the first time are willing to forget everything we have learned about the art of war. Remember the midterms? We couldn't understand why he lost the House. Then it all made sense. We kept the Senate because we needed the Senate. We lost the House because we didn't want the House. We want them to expose their crimes through impeachment and many other frauds like withholding pandemic relief, etc. What happened yesterday is as much part of the plan as everything else. It has been flawlessly executed and we have lured the enemy countless times into traps when they thought we were losing. Now is no different. You will soon see why this has had, this had to happen. Don't ruin these few days ahead for yourself with worry. Remember, what you have learned about Trump and Q, they simply cannot lose no matter how it looks. Military grade, keep enjoying the show. Then we have Trump tweeting this out. All of the recent Biden claim states will be legally challenged by us for voter fraud and state election fraud. Plenty of proof. Just check out the media. We will win. That's in all caps. America first. Now, what's very interesting is we know the deep state, the corrupt politicians, the invisible enemy, They're not just going to say, okay, we give, you got us on voter fraud. They're going to try to stop this. They've been censoring almost everyone now, putting labels on them, banning them, blocking their accounts. And now there is a call to ban Trump's Twitter account. This is from David Cicilline. And this is what this individual tweeted right now. And by the way, this is the U.S. House candidate. RI1. Right now, the president Twitter account is posting lies and misinformation at breathtaking clip. It is a threat to our democracy and should be suspended until the votes are counted. Now, that is not the only individual who's asking for Trump's account to be brought down. We have others. This is from Kristen Clark, and it says, Breaking, 
were calling for Jack and Twitter to suspend the account of the president given multiple violations of Twitter's civic integrity policy that espoused disinformation regarding our elections. The flags placed on these posts do not go far enough. So they're already making the call to get rid of Trump's account. Were we told this? Yes, we were. I do believe when everything is said and done, they're gonna have to either bring down social media or block everyone. And remember, back in post 2793, it said zero day with brackets, countermeasures in place. Example, think emergency alert system. Think White House controlled new RT news website. Think White House controlled new video stream platform. Think here, should this occur, immediate steps will be taken to classify each as a public utility, essential public services to gain appropriate government regulation control. Why do we make things public? Well, so first of all, people know about it and hopefully they don't go through with the plan. Secondly, why do they make things public, like a public utility? Well, this gives the people the right to speak freely. Think about the phone system. Think about the electrical system. Think about gas that comes to your house. These are public utilities. Can you imagine if you were on a phone call and Verizon or Sprint said, hey, I don't like what you're saying. I'm cutting you off. Well, that would be unbelievable. But isn't that what social media is doing? I don't like what you say. I'm going to cut you off. If you're making them a public utility, they can't do this. The Patriots, they knew for a very long time that this was coming. They allowed the deep state, the corrupt politicians, the mainstream media to do all of this. It's about exposing everything. And it seems that the emergency alert system is now on deck. They have begun making the call to ban Trump, which means if they bring him down, they're gonna bring down everyone else because they need to control the narrative, which means the Patriots move to the next phase of the plan. Listen, everyone, thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe, and especially be prepared. Thanks a lot.